Hello friends, and welcome to my new video, in which I'll tell you some amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. The first story is The Saga of Mr. NYC Prior to Spectrum Internet Repair returning with what might be the most entitled tale yet, this is, in my 33 years on this earth, among the five most entitled people I have ever spoken to or will ever speak to. This anecdote still makes me laugh heartily because it is so incredibly dumb. Although the caller lived in New York City at the time, I won't be referring to them as Mr. NYC because I don't think this is especially distinguishing information considering the approximately 4 million males that live in NYC at any given time. In the month of February of the year of our Lord 2021, our story begins. Although I didn't really handle the first interaction, I will refer to one of my co-workers, Jason, as Jason, giving me the account number so I could check the notes because they were so absurd. This guy could not filter and purge emails from his inbox in bulk, so he had demanded a manager. It would be slow and challenging to even try to filter and do anything with an IMAP inbox that huge because it included 4.98 gigabytes of data out of the allotted 5 gigabytes. Although I'm not sure how long the call lasted, Jason had incorrectly sent a ticket regarding the email issue to our network operations center. Jason left after serving his two weeks and went on to work as an SOC analyst somewhere else, so I can see his lack of concern for the current state of affairs. I still carry me in COD. Great dude. When I pull the ticket up to read it, it has already been denied. The user is having problems since they have almost 86,000 emails in their inbox, even though all inbox functionality is working as it should. In addition, NOC informed Lead that he would receive coaching on process. However, by the time it was time for review, Lead had already departed. In October 2021, fast ahead, I've reached my moment. A call that seems to be an extension of existing email problems, and the caller is threatening legal action. Just so I can start writing notes, I look up the account number, and the name sounds familiar. I discovered Jason's account notation from eight months ago after doing a truly valiant amount of scrolling, and I take the ticket number off of it to see if any more information has been submitted to NOC about this person. Perhaps they are indeed experiencing email problems, and in that case, I may be of assistance. We start when I don my best customer service smile voice, TM. Hello, Mr. NYC. Chose here. Speaking of violence, I know you've been experiencing some issues with our email system. I'm sorry for keeping you waiting, but I was checking your account to see whether you had previously phoned regarding your inbox and wanted to better understand your circumstances. In order for me to help you the most, may I please ask if this is a new or related issue? I demand email technical support. I know what his problem is. I just want him to say it. Yes, sir. I am here to try everything I can to assist you. If I could simply know about our email system you're experiencing issues with, I could better assist you. Furthermore, he would be aware that we made fun of him at work if he knew that I knew, and I can't have that conversation on a line that's formally recorded. Why am I unable to get technical support for my email from anyone? I keep calling, but no one would provide me technical support. I regret for the continued inconvenience, sir, and I promise to do everything within my power to find a solution that works for you. I noticed that you have some previous tickets associated with this inbox. Would it be okay for me to take a moment to review those in order to ensure that I don't follow my colleague's footsteps and repeating actions that haven't resulted in the resolution you were looking for? This section consists of a string of NOC denials that persistently make mention of an earlier ticket. It seems to have an initial submission from Jason. He seems to have started pushing for tickets on every escalated call ever after he learned that we may submit NOC tickets for an issue resolution. 
When I'm actually performing some rough math over the numbers of escalations and legal threats I see in the account notes, I play the part where I say my system's just a bit slow. I worked out to about three calls a day, every day, for eight months straight, with six to eight different persons. Yes, sir, it appears that despite our email team's repeated reviews of your account, they haven't yet been able to identify a problem with it. Could you please explain the situation to me so that I can make sure that nothing was lacking from your previous tickets so they would have what they needed? While he won't go into detail about why he can't delete emails in bulk, he makes it abundantly evident that Gmail already has the feature he desires, and that we need to as well because it would benefit users more. Although I'm not familiar with the inner workings of email systems, I do know that even with my technological skills, I could just spin up a system on the spot and send it to production. Being a hardware geek myself, my main motivation for writing code is to create absurdly small breadboard computers or automate fundamental system operations. Not nearly skilled enough to handle anything remotely similar to this kind of request. Much appreciation to those who work on enterprise-level system maintenance. We then move on to the more entertaining portion of the call, during which I really struggle not to laugh at him because he is still deliberately refusing to tell me what the actual nature of his problem is beyond email technical support. I demand to speak with blank. Do you know who that is? That would be the CEO of Charter Spectrum, yes, Mr. NYC. Although I don't know him well, I'm going to assume that since it's after 9 o'clock, he has already left his office. I need his fax number and office number. It is inappropriate for this business to refuse to assist a devoted client. I'm sorry, sir, there are a few individuals standing between Mr. Blank and myself. At this moment, I do not currently own his direct contact information. I called this number after finding it on Google and noted that no one answers. I've called it 10 times today and nobody has picked up. This is not acceptable. We're really not supposed to do this, but I've been on the phone for almost an hour and I want an explanation for not listening to Mr. NYC's voice and his denial that he can't handle his own inbox. I'd like to let you know that our phone systems operate such that you will hear the hold music if I do make an outgoing call. Do you find that acceptable, sir? Could you please check the number that I see on Google is the same as the one you were referring to, sir? I verify that the number displayed on my screen corresponds to the one he wants me to call. And sure enough, I go through a Spectrum corporate office, choose a number system. According to what I've been told, this does not lead anywhere other than to a line that ends after three minutes of ringing. I still write it down on his account, even though it demonstrates nothing, and might as well just be a funny number that someone skilled in SEO looked up on Google. I can now drink my water and use my computer to make DX crotch-chopping gestures for a few minutes. It's beyond 10 o'clock at night, and the only persons still in the building are the cleaning crew, myself, and another repair manager who was unable to leave until I finished the conversation in case there was any more escalation. Greetings, Mr. NYC. Are you still present? Yes, I, I can attest that the number you provided performed precisely as you stated, but I'm unable to verify or refute its legitimacy because I was unable to locate any mention of it in any paperwork. In the event that it becomes useful later, I will add that number to the call notes. Subsequently, he continued to spew verbal diarrhea about email technical support, how nobody he speaks to understands computers, that he will sue us because we obviously don't care enough to be like Google, and that the feature was there when Roadrunner sent him the email. Again, not particularly identifying information, as Roadrunner was the only company servicing NYC that got absorbed in the 2010 merger. Although it is stated that Roadrunner had an email feature, I'm pretty sure something about it wasn't worth supporting or was generating issues during the merger that resulted in Charter Spectrum. I'm not sure how corporate mergers of technical systems work. 
while there are certainly a few lawsuits that Spectrum should be entitled to, this one isn't related to a lack of function on the free email service. Well, sir, given your declaration that you would file a lawsuit against us, I must inform you that I must send a copy of this conversation along with an escalation request to our corporate escalations division. Since I'm not employed by that department, I'm unable to vouch for anything they do, but I am aware that they have connections to make those in positions of authority above me, so this may help you obtain the contact details you requested. Could you please confirm your contact details for this matter before I fill out this form? Why are you not able to move me there right away? Are you not available 24 hours a day? Only our repair divisions are covered by our call center's round-the-clock operation, and transfers are not accepted for our escalations team because they are exclusively outbound. I sincerely regret any misinformation you may have received about our availability. At around midnight, he finally gives in, and I am finally free of his nonsense. I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything, thus it takes me an additional half an hour to complete all the extra information on my escalation ticket. When my shift finally ends, two minutes after midnight, or slightly more than two hours later, I finally punch out. For nearly a year, this man called in to abuse and humiliate contact center workers, complaining that he couldn't remove items from the inbox the way he wanted to because the email system's code base didn't have the necessary capability. Then, claiming that Google already had the system, he insisted that we create it for him. Of course, free of charge. Software engineers just, yeah, work for free. He then goes on to repeatedly demand a face-to-face meeting with the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company, citing his dissatisfaction with the way the email system functions and arguing that given his superior obvious intelligence and familiarity with computational systems, he should be appointed to the board of directors. If he had merely taken 20 minutes a day to delete at least 100 emails, his inbox would have been completely empty by the time I spoke with him, assuming he didn't have a single email he felt was significant, for those of you who want to do the arithmetic with me. He probably could have cleared it up in about two weeks if he had dedicated the same four to six hours a day to inbox maintenance as he did to harass call center staff. All right, so I think we can all agree that this guy is... A complete loser, wasting his time, calling four to six hours a day for months to a year? Like, that is a a sad life, and I'm sorry, like, that you had to deal with that in any capacity, OP, because this is just awful. But you gotta admire his dedication. (laughs) You know, it was definitely directed in the wrong way, you know? The energy was concentrated uh, towards the wrong goal. But it's impressive. It's definitely loser behavior and weird and should not be done. But the the energy side of things is impressive nonetheless. Anyway, that aside, I just really don't have any more words to describe how ridiculous and dumb this whole situation was. I I think you played your part well here, OP, and I don't really think there's much more you could really do. So... Props to you and thanks for sharing. The next story is, HOA destroyed my property. Well, I recently moved to a new neighborhood, which at first glance was very nice and comfortable. Privacy and autonomy have always been key factors for me when choosing a place to live, even temporarily. When I chose an apartment to rent or even a hotel in a resort, I always looked for the quietest neighborhood and the best conditions. This time, it's completely my private home, which will be a part of my life for a very long time, so I've been looking at all the available options very seriously and for a very long time. I made sure twice that this house was not part of any homeowners association and then bought it. I liked everything but the idol was ruined by the loud noise of heavy machinery I heard on a sunny morning. 
The demolition crew was destroying my beautifully landscaped patio, which was a real highlight of my yard. These true professionals claimed that they were hired by the local HOA and had every right to do the work on the land. I told them to stop immediately and told them to bring their boss and the representative of the HOA who had authorized them to do so. They brought a woman who I will call Karen. She told me that the previous HOA had a contract with the previous owner of my property so they could bypass my consent and just do their job. I told her that I didn't care what agreements they had with the previous owner because I'm the new and only owner who is against the professionals they hired destroying my private property. As I found out, their plan was to destroy my patio and build public benches for all the neighbors to use. When the dialogue with Karen reached an impasse, I called the police. The officers arrived, and after doing a brief investigation, the officer informed the HOA that the HOA was destroying the property without having an up-to-date contract. The contract they showed was three years overdue. The police made a report, and so the HOA ordered the builders to stop dismantling my already destroyed patio. First, I started looking for a lawyer. I was lucky to find a really experienced and reputable lawyer in the field of land law. Using the police report as well as surveillance footage that was sent directly to the place where the process was taking place, we filed a lawsuit against the HOA. I also contacted other people who had suffered harm because of the actions of the HOA. I am convinced that if there is any evil, the best way to defeat it is to unite. These people told us many different facts about this HOA and provided us with evidence. The legal process was long, but fruitful. In the end, the court ruled in favor of the good, in our favor. The HOA was obliged to pay me a total of $155,990. This amount was enough for me to restore my private property. The HOA faced some really big problems, so almost all of its board members resigned and lost a lot of money. The next story is Commotion in the Gym When I get home from work or school, I try to hit the gym. I try to find time to work out Monday through Friday because I put on a lot of weight during the summer. Now, the gym I go to is only a neighborhood gym. In that gym, we have a little community that's quite familiar with one another. As a regular now, I can pretty much identify everyone, and they were all already familiar with me. Now, on a Friday, I recognize a different face. She gave off the impression of being an ordinary soccer mom who had just dropped her kids off at school. Before anything more happens... Let me just say that I was dressed entirely differently from the other staff. They resembled those Honda helper guys with their blue shirt and brown workout shorts. I stood out from the staff because I was dressed absolutely differently. I was wearing a dark gray shirt and black sweatpants. We had these portions of the barbell that were connected to safety lines this Friday. I'm not sure the name of those enormous mechanical devices that supported many weights and barbells, but these machines were now surrounded by yellow caution tape since the safety lines needed to be replaced. I was at another machine, just next to it. After checking in, Karen enters the gym and makes her way to the barbell areas. Karen is K, I am me, and B is boss, the gym manager. Me, just working out, minding my own business. K. Gives me a wave. Me. Removes my earbuds. Hey, what's going on? K. Hi, are you able to assist me? Me. Well, of course. You must be new here, I assume. K. Well, that's true. I wanted to use those barbells and wanted to know whether I could remove them. At this point, she remained kind. Heavens, I wish that after this she was still nice. Me. I apologize, ma'am. It's not my responsibility to remove the tape from the safety lines that the gym is upgrading for the barbells. 
K. Why is that the case? Tonality now, sassy. Me. Since I'm not employed here. K. You're exercising near that station, so I can tell that you're lying. Me. Ma'am, I don't look like any of the staff members at all. I have on a gra- K. Interrupting me. <laughs> Keep it. Remove those tapes immediately. Me. Pardon me? Now, I wasn't going to take her snarky attitude and just remain mute because I was already having a bad day. Me. I already told you, lady. I don't... K. Quickly, do it! She yells. By now, most people in the gym have undoubtedly heard her. Once more, I wasn't going to adopt her sour disposition at this time. Me. Do you need to hear this from me again? I'm not employed here, and even if I succeeded, I couldn't just remove the tape and give it to you. Do you want to use those barbells and then die? What? You chose to test my limitations, even though I've been kind to you and haven't responded to you yet. I've had a really stressful week, and this is the only time I have to unwind. My entire day was ruined by you coming up to me and screaming at me. Before I use my bare fist to knock you out cold, I would like you to F off from my sight. At this point, most folks just give up and leave me alone. Not this woman. K. You work here. I know it. I'm going to get you fired right now by calling your management. Me. I struggle to control my fury, so at this point, I just screamed aloud. At that point, the manager does approach me. B. Hazel, please stop. I don't want you to start throwing fits right now. Me. Trying to gather myself. Thank you, Chief, but I've been having a very stupid conversation this entire time. B. Squints at the woman. Ma'am, I think you should leave the gym. K. What? How come? Why? I'm a member here. B. See... My friend Hazel over here doesn't really care who he's talking to, a man or a woman. If you hang around here much longer, he'll really sock you. Also, I'm canceling your membership because of the disturbance you've caused. K. Why? That's not possible for you. In any case, who are you? B. The supervisor. Please, go now. K. Oh my god, I'm getting you fired as well. Who's in charge of you? I'm terminating you both immediately. B. Hazel, please leave now. When things settle down, I'll give you a call. So I leave the gym after that. A few seconds afterward, the police car arrives at the gym. It seems that, from what I've heard, that she was arrested for disturbing the peace. Whatever it was, I'm simply relieved that it's over and that I won't have to give this woman the cold shoulder. Yeah, I have some people that are pretty close to me that I know that have a really tough time, just naturally, always have, keeping their anger in and controlling it. So, good on you, OP. I, I understand really how difficult it can be to hold back and, you know, not physically let yourself explode. Um, so, I mean, yelling in the end, it can be, you know, scary, intimidating, obnoxious, whatever, but it's... You know, it's not hurting anyone. Um, so, all in all, I think, f given your circumstances, you did about as well as you could there. And so, I'm proud of you for being able to hold back there. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> I can't be wrong. I'm just going to get you fired then. It's like, what? Why? I, I, it's just, it takes so much effort and energy. Like, this person just ha has to be so spiteful and... I, I don't know. Before I go on a tirade, let's just end it there. But police arrive and peace returns to your life and the gym. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll see you soon.